Hey, welcome back to our Facebook Leap Code interview question series here on Web3 Idiots. We're going through the most frequent Facebook questions uh, according to Leap Code based on their frequency in the past six months. Uh, this is a great series if you're trying to prep for an upcoming tech screen or full loop um, and you are struggling to figure out the answers to some of these questions. Um, there is the loudest bird in the world just hanging outside my window again. Uh, one day that bird will go away. Uh, but today we're tackling number 236, lowest common ancestor, also called LCA, of a binary tree. So given a binary tree, find the lowest common ancestor, LCA, of two given nodes in the tree. According to the definition, blah, 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 blah. Uh, lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes, P and Q, as the lowest node in the tree that has both p and q as descendants uh, or it could also be a descendant of itself so uh, over here we have our tree we have a root of three a left child of five a right child of one etc etc uh, and so we're looking for a p of five so this is our p over here and a q of one over here so the lowest parent node that they share would be this three that is where they connect so that is why we get this output of three uh, let's take a look at this next one we have a p of five that's right here and a q of four that's all the way down here so uh, this they are connected at this point here the five itself so the output is actually the p value this five here because it is the, I guess, lowest level or lowest ancestor that connects these two. Um, so if our Q was four and our P was six, again, the LCA would still be a five. If we had a four and a seven, it would be a two. If we had a four and a zero, it would be this three up here. It is where it connects uh, these two nodes with the parent. So uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Basically what we wanna do is go through recursively, that's how we're gonna solve it today. And we're gonna see if we come across P, a Q, or if we uh, get to a null value. So like a left or right child of the six, we have a null and another null um, that means we did not find it, so we'd just be passing up uh, a null value. So uh, I'm going to write out the code right now just to, to show you, and then I'll explain what is going on. So we have a, if we don't have a root, this is a common way of breaking out uh, of a recursive call. Uh, also, if our root is equal to the P, also, or if our root is equal to our q these are the the things that we want to look for and uh break out so over here um we are looking for the five and the four so when we hit this five we don't have to keep searching anymore we pop up here and then here and here we have nulls so we have a null that gets up here and we have this five up here that means we know that this five must have the Q of four underneath it. So that is why it will be this value here. Um, so we will return our root, which is where we are at. Um, and then we need to define uh, our left and our right. So are we looking for whether or not P or Q exists on the left or the right? So we'll say constant left equals, and we're going to call this again, lowest common ancestor. And we're we'll going to be calling root dot left, pretty straightforward. We're passing our P and our Q in again. And then we will also do the same thing with our right value. Uh, right. So 
basically what we're doing is we're checking the left side to see if P or Q exists, and we're also checking the right side if P or Q exists. And we're passing up uh, the node uh, of if it does exist. So this is where the tricky part comes to. So we are going to be returning a node. So first up, we need to check does our left and our right exist? Do they exist? So in this example, we'll come up to example one. We have this three, we have our left, and we have our right. So we are looking for the five, and we're looking for the one. So this would pass up the five, this would pass up the one. Neither one of them are null, so we have our left and our right. That means the lowest common ancestor would be the current root we are on. So uh, basically what we're going to do is return this root. Else, what we are going to do is we're going to see if we have a left or a right. So we'll come back down to this one here. We have a 5, and the other target is this 4. So we'll go left, and we go right. So if we go right, uh, this is not, then we call it left again. This would be a null. This would be a null. So the root value we pass up to this 3 would be null. But on this side, we hit this 5. So we're passing up this 5. So on the we have the left value over here would be this 5 node. And our right value would be a null. So that is not this case here. This would not be the parent node. So what we're going to do is return the left or the right that has a value. So we'll pass up our left or we'll pass up our right. Either one of those. And yeah, that is how you actually solve it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's only tricky if you haven't seen a question like this, but once you kind of understand how the logic works, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I know if you've never seen a question like this, if I just show you these four lines of code, you may not understand what is going on. Um, so, yeah. Um, so we can actually just go through, do we have an example three? We'll, we'll go through example two here, um, just to, you know, kind of show you what's going on. Uh, I'll put it down here, and I'll try my best to explain the call stack. So first up, we have, I'm just going to call it LCA, and our root will be our three. Our P, where's our P? It is a five, and our Q is a four node. So uh, that is our first call stack. And then... Basically, we hit this point here. Okay. We do not hit that. All right. So then what we do is we do our left. So our constant left is equal to our next call again. So LCA. And this time we are passing the left value. So that would be a 5. And then we keep our 5 and our 4. And that would be our next that'd be all the way over here kind of crazy so that would be our next call stack and then that is when we hit this here this 15 line 15 so yes our root is equal to a p or a q it is equal to this so then what we do is we end up passing back that value so this lca of 5 5 and 4 is actually now just equal to 5 and then we do the same thing. So we have constant of right, and we're calling the LCA of the right. So the right of 3 is 1. And then we also have our P and our Q, which would be 5 and 4. Um, so then we go through this again. Pop, pop, pop. And we do not hit a 5 or a 4, so then we end up going through lines 16 and 17 again. So all the way back over here, we have LCA. So our constant, let me, I'm trying my best to be as convenient as possible. So here we go left, our constant left would now be equal to LCA of 
will be left of one, which would be our zero. We'll also pass our five and our four. And then before we move on to the right, we are actually gonna be going through this function here. This is the wonder of recursion. So here we go, LCA, and then our left. So, sorry, constant left, and then that is equal to LCA, oops, LCA, and our left is a null value. So we'll be passing in uh, null, five and four, but because we hit this null, that is line 15 here, we are returning that value. So constant left is equal to null, and then we can move on to the right of that zero. So constant right is equal to LCA of, again, null, five and four. Uh, we hit that line 15 call. That means this is now equal to null. So then we know that we do not have our left and we do not have our right. So we return our root. No, we don't because we don't have both of them. So then we return either left or right, and because neither one of them has a value, we'll end up just returning this null. So we jump all the way back up here to this null. So it's a lot of work just to get through it, but we're gonna keep going on. So then we have our right. So our constant right is now equal to our LCA, and that would be this eight here. So we have our eight, our five, and our four. And then again, for this LCA, we're gonna be calling uh, our left again, let constant left, sorry, left equal LCA. And the left of this eight is a null value. So we have null, five, and four. Uh, again, we hit this line here on that call. So we're gonna be returning that value, which would be null. And then we're gonna do the same thing for a right. Right is now equal to LCA, where we have uh, a null value, five and four, because to the right of this eight, it does not have a child as null. Again, we hit this line here, line 15. Uh, so we're gonna be passing back a null uh, because neither one of them have a value and that means this would be a null. So then this right becomes a null, which means now we have two of these null values, which means this now becomes null. And then we have a left that has a value and a right that has a value. And at that point, we are just returning the one with the value. And that would be this five here. So then at the end, we are returning this five. And that is how this works. Um, I'm trying to explain it as easily as possible. Um, if you have any questions as far as how this logic works still, please post them below. I'll, I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run this just to show you that it does work. Uh, wonderful, amazing, and then we're gonna submit as well. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we are better than 78.49% and our memory is quite good as well. So um, yeah. That was 236, lowest common ancestor of a binary tree uh, as part of our Facebook interview question series. Uh, if you learned something, please like this video. Uh, please subscribe, it really helps me out. Uh, it gives me the motivation to keep making these. And uh, yeah, share it with a friend who is studying. And if you have any requests for questions, uh, please let me know and I'll get to uh, coding it out and explaining how it works. Uh, thank you so much. And um, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, let's do time, uh, time and space. So time complexity would be O of N because it could be an unbalanced, uh, sorry. Time complexity would be O of N because the root nodes may be hidden on uh, a P in the Q may be on the far left or on the far right. Um, so worst case scenario O of N, and then I guess best case scenario O of one if our root node is the P or the Q. Um, and then space complexity uh, would be this, would be a call stack that we have to deal with. 
So like you saw uh, when I was going through it, we had LCA called LCA called LCA called LCA. So uh, it would be worst case scenario would be O of N where every node is a, like a right or a left child. Um, so it pretty much gets rid of the entire binary structure. So yeah, that is how you do it. Anyways, uh, thank you so much. Have a great day and uh, post any questions below. I'll help you out. Bye-bye.